Hi and welcome to the Gadget Show Web TV. Now each week John checks out the hottest tech and here's his latest first look. This is Sony's new Xperia Play. It's tempting to think of it as a phone with a PSP built in because uh, when you slide it open you don't get a QWERTY keyboard. Instead you get a Sony style game controller. We'll look at that in a moment. First of all, how good is it as a phone? Well, uh, quite respectable actually. I know it's a bit bigger with the uh, game controller built in, but not unacceptably so, and the curved shape on the bottom makes it quite good to hold. The screen's pretty clear, it's got good colours, not that bright, uh, so it could be a problem outside. Reception's fairly good, Wi-Fi reception fairly good, battery life okay, music player quality is very good indeed, whether you're listening through headphones or the excellent pair of built-in stereo speakers. It uses Android 2.3, the latest version, so Sony Ericsson are clearly learning lessons here, they're not sort of throwing their handsets out with uh, vintage versions of Android, and they've resisted the temptation to put too much of their own interface on it. Um, you do still get this sort of timescape social networking aggregator which puts your messages into little tiles that you can easily flick through. There's a 5 megapixel camera, it doesn't have HD video, and the picture quality is sort of acceptable without being brilliant. Overall then, as a phone, the Xperia Play is one you needn't be ashamed of. What about its USP though, its gaming credentials? Well, slide it open and most of the controls on the gamepad look pretty familiar. They're very much the normal PlayStation controls, the only exception are these uh, circular touch pads here. Around the back you've got the uh, shoulder left and right buttons, just one pair of those. To actually locate and play games on your Xperia Play, though, you do have to negotiate a slightly disjointed set of software. When you first slide the gamepad open, Xperia Play opens. That's an interface which shows you some of the games you've got on the phones. Most of these actually came with it. Things like Star Battalion, FIFA 10, um, Bruce Lee here. If you want to get more, click on the More Games tab and the whole new series of icons appears which lead you through either to the game developers websites where you can buy or indeed uh, to those games on the Android market. You can also download PS1 games that have been adapted for the Xperia Play but these don't show up in the Xperia Play interface, they show up on another piece of software called PlayStation Pocket. There's one called Crash Bandicoot which is supplied with the phone. You'll soon find yourself navigating through the idiosyncrasies though and actually enjoying the games because it really is a much more enjoyable gaming experience than any phone I've tried to date. I tried the uh, Asphalt 6 driving game for example which has been adapted to use the controls of the Xperia Play and uh, it really was much more satisfying than playing similar games on a touchscreen only phone. Although you can actually use the Xperia Play's touchscreen as well if you want to. Obviously there are some constraints, mainly due to the sheer physical small size of the gamepad, which can leave you feeling rather cramped after half an hour or so, but uh, one mustn't ask for the impossible, I think that's only to be expected. The number of Xperia Play games available at the moment is fairly limited and there may be a problem ahead if the Play doesn't get the momentum it needs to encourage developers. But for the moment it's undoubtedly a good combination of a decent phone and a surprisingly competent portable gaming device.